Welcome back to comics, to Hot Comics, Comics TV. All right, um, I want to talk about Atlas and one other games. Um, it was published for the 3DS. And this series is the original series of uh, Shin Megami Tensei. This is uh, the fourth um, game on the line. <clears throat> and this is the art book. We were going to see the production of this game. Uh, typical Japanese fashion. They always like to put their a little like cover sleeve on the other sleeve they changed the um, the art direction on this one as this was not uh, Kaneko's work uh, he was just uh, I think involved on the literature on the on the writings on the storyline of this um, of this line of the game, uh, I'm just gonna take out the dust jacket. So that's the actual illustration. This is really cool. You can see how they build up the entire the entire drawing, and he uh, the new director, the new art director, is just doing everything on pen, like on. It all this is digital, uh, but you can sort of see the simplicity of how everything's done very clean and then everything gets built up with color which is the process that they've applied on this series so um this is the entry that for the 3ds this was just before the uh, the new one number five that came out on the switch not long ago um this is the third title i had played at that stage i was Invested on uh, Devil Summoner and also in um, Soul Hackers. Soul Hackers was the second one that I played. So this is the new art director, um, Doi uh, Masayuki. Masayuki Doi. Um, he's the one that's done this art direction. He's that's his character designs and. This is the construction of the world, so everything's really detailed. This is an dystopic sort of future um, that um, the people have survived, like an apocalyptic event, and that's pretty much the premise for a lot of the series. And it gets retold, you know, it, it, they're not all connected, they just got like a similar theme going on from the very first one. Which was an adaptation for a novel, but I'm not going to get into the details of Shin Megami Tensei uh, series. Uh, I'll just brush it really quickly. The uh, original series was about a school student to develop a program, and he, in this program, in this software with the computer, he is able to summon a demon. So he, the, the software is able to sort of summon a demon, and the kid in the school he's bullied, and then he just acts on revenge, and that was then later on adapted by Atlas, the video game publisher that we're talking about right now has produced this game, and they did a couple of adaptations. They did one for the MSX, they did another one on the Nintendo and the NES and the original NES. And the word dungeon crawl is pretty much based on the style of um, wizardry. So you had that sort of like dungeon crawling sort of my first point view. And this is the first time when they have moved away from that, uh, what do you call it, um, style of game mechanics. Because this one's a little, this is only 3D and this is just acting on... Um, on an action-based sort of uh, turn-based uh, RPG, it, it, I would recommend this for anybody who likes long RPG, uh, epic stories and epic gameplay. Uh, it's got its technicalities. Um, also, it does collect uh, the monsters that you come across, so it's got the same ideology because this is the original game that created the pocket monster sort of idea uh, or mechanic that later on Pokemon sort of took. So uh, this is an older series than Pokemon and 
Atlas now is better known for the Persona 5 series, for the Persona series. That's that's their main IP now, which was a spin-off of this series. And um, anyway, so hearing uh, the world that we're looking at of East Mikado uh, is where the things are taking place and they have a journey quest for newcomers and then this technology sort of allows them to go into the quest, become an elite, fighting elite of becoming a knight, a samurai. So this is all really well fleshed out. Um, nicely done. Beautiful illustration. It's all digital, obviously, so... So, all this world is in a medieval uh, setting when you start, and then you sort of climb up into... Uh, I'm not going to spoil the story, but you climb up to a modern setting later on, so... And that's where you fight demons and the quests and everything. And it's it always got that alignment of evil, good, and neutral. And you're always in conflict. And you got to make very, very difficult decisions to sort of be uh, liberating humanity from the shackles of all these bizarre events. Or you go the chaotic good route where you, you, you I mean, the, the good route, and it's like, yeah, it's quite bizarre. And then, and then you go to, to, to or, or you could do evil, it would be, it'll be a total bad guy. <laughs> Let all the demons control the world. <laughs> beautifully crafted, beautifully illustrated. So people are living in a dystopic future, uh, the people that survive, like, the apocalypse, I guess. And, um, it's all, m like, Mad Max in the days of the Thunderdome, everybody's killing each other. And there's demons on top of everything else, it's crazy. And in little pockets of subterranean places, like the railways and whatnot, people are, like, living in like tiny little communities and there's demon hunters and whatnot and the vices of man see these guys like moving around with a trolley and a gun that's your weapons dealer and that's your armor dealer this guy's funny this guy guys yeah. did you bring more money next time <laughs> so everybody's pretty nasty rough around their ages Funny, fun, funny premise uh, on, onto everything. Oh, yeah, that's the... Um... So, Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey was the first time when you saw these helmets. And some of those characters kind of like cross over to these. It's, it's got nice, it's got look at nice sort of linkage to the other games. This got fully narrated, like every they voiced over um, all the characters and all the major scenes have audio. Before that, it was just like a just like a reading, like a graphic novel sort of thing. Like you were reading and reading and reading and reading dialogue as as you were playing sort of thing. And I think that the formula for the for this game as a modern RPG, where you're running around and then a dungeon. And you had the ability to do the first strike. That, that, that concept was applied onto this. And it, it was very polished. How you you play this gameplay. Opposed to the older entries. You, you have a lot of a lot of fun with this one. So yeah. Um, I played this on the 3DS. On my old 3DS. On my original 3DS. And um, a lot of fun. Um, it... This one had a very, very, very intoxicating narrative. I mean, you, you, you were just absorbed. You, you got sucked in into this world. Absolutely. Even though it was like on a handheld and a console, it was like, it really sucks you in how the story goes. And you liked all the characters. The characters were really cool. The protagonist, which is this 
guy, he, uh, he's, um, he's a hero with no name. He's just literally an empty vessel for you to run around. And whatever options and uh, decisions that you make across your journey in this game, that's how you end up, um, what do you call it, um... That's how the game unfolds, and depending on that, it will give you one of the three endings, obviously. You would have to do multiple runs to get to see all the endings, and if you have the time, by all means. I mean, I've done it. I think I've done it twice, and then on top of that, I did play um, Apocalypse, which is like a continuation of these, but um, anyway... And it's got pixel art as well on top of everything else. It's like really well crafted. This whole uh, this whole idea was this whole project was really well put together. So that's Hero with no name. That's your uh, what do you call it? Analog for you for you to run around into the adventure. Uh, sorry for adjusting that. Anyway, uh, so this is beautiful. How they've done this. So this the, this must have been like another an alternative. Here idea, the concept design for the character. In the end, they go with this. So there are these samurai elite forces that carry on this uh, computer uh, AI sort of assistance on their wrist. And that sort of tells them what what's up, what's not going on. And that's how you level up and all that. You negotiate with demons as well to be part of your party. Sometimes they will take your money and come, come with you. Sometimes they will take your money and just run away. <laughs> depending on the team <laughs> it's quite funny it, it this is i cannot ever like recommend this enough to people to tell them if you are bored bored and you don't want to play right on the mill sort of rpgs and you want to play something that's going to be a lot of fun you have the time for it go into what do you call it uh into this library of 3ds games and just play shin megami tensei um four because it's, there's a lot of fun. Five, I mean, it's total different, total different game mechanic on five on the Switch, and this is um, like the music, the, the art direction. It's all uh, very cyberpunk. It's got elements of uh, horror. It's got elements of uh, fantasy and great, great stuff. I think that Kaneko was the one who wrote this story. He who was the original art director. Uh, for the um, for the series, he made the, the library of, of demons. He's like calling the demon artist because he's the one who did uh, the majority of the existing library for you for for these um, for these game series. So, and then you see him on Persona Five. You see him on uh, what do you call it? On um, Soul Hacker, Soul Hackers Two, all of the series. It's all of that. All of that there. So this is part of the characters on your party, Jonathan, Walter, beautifully drawn, nice. These are the portraits that you get in the game. Isabu, Isabu, what, what character is this? She's like a manga, um, what do you call it, um, nerd. <laughs> she likes to read manga. She's cool, she's cool. She's always talking about how she's been discovering these books. With narrative and story, and <laughs> very cool, very cool. This is a top, top, top character that they developed. Uh, I really like what they did with this. And Navarro or Navar, Navar, that's it. That Navar. <laughs> He's a stack up boy. It's funny. Uh, I won't spoil uh, what's happening. This is like an outrageous character design, like a guy with scissors for hands. I mean, I kind of understand a hook, but scissors? It's a total different story. This is like a great, great entry for, um, for this series. So, yeah, this is, um, I'm not going to say anything about it, but yeah, it's sporting the old, uh, Strange Journey uniform for the Special Forces. They're going to the Schwarzwald. Um, nice character design, I mean, beautiful. And it's playing on the strengths of the color, or the coloring process, because the drawing is super, super clean. Really well, well executed. 
my compliments to the director, the art director. The, I think this is an analog for Kaneko. Kaneko looks like this these days. It's like a hipster. I'm not gonna call him a hipster. But he's a cool, 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 cool dude. Cool cat. Outrageous characters. Outrageous characters. Mm. So this character is an analog to uh, Dr. Stephen Hawkins. So I'm not going to say more than that. And uh, that's a computer. Uh, I'm in love in love with pixel art I'm not gonna zoom in but I'm just gonna bring the book a little bit closer for everybody to appreciate this this is so cool to see little pixel art this is what you see on the game some of these NPCs when you come across uh, what do you call it the world that you're traversing through this is so awesome They've done all of these characters. Beautiful stuff. Because you, you, you come back and you sort of become a part of a... Um, of a um, hunter's guild. So these are the equipment sort of things, the armor. Everything's so well put together. And it's such a like, eclectic collection of things. I mean, the, the way that they put this together is amazing. I mean, you got sports gear, you got all medieval stuff, which is insane and hilarious to run around. I think at one point I was running with a leather jacket like this. I had this for quite a long time. I, was in I, I didn't care about my stats. I was just running around with that and a helmet like this. <laughs> oh, so much fun. Mm, yeah, I found the rabbit set as well. At one point, I was running around with rabbit head. <laughs> a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, this kind of does cross over with uh, other commercial artists that came in and guest appeared to do some of the demons. These are new uh, iterations of the old character designs, like the Minotaur and the fairy she's like a staple of the series she's always appearing in every single series of the games whatever it is you always see the fairy she's always there so these are new um new designs for these characters 3d wow the demon library is quite bizarre Yes, uh, so uh, the name of this art escapes me, but he um, he's a well accomplished mangaka. He did series. He does statues of these things as well. Uh, he they got him to do some freelance for these. Um, Phantom Core. He did Phantom Core stuff. So these are the new designs for some of the monsters and the demons, Lucifer, and his different variations. So these are his designs. Different artists were invited. So they even included statues and they scanned them and then they t turned them into the monsters that you would find. Uh, there was a little bit of a, a complaint about some of the people that, um, like some of the fan fans, like the hardcore fans. And like, oh, they shouldn't be changing Kaneko's work. But it's a new entry, new things get introduced, why not? You know, these are the two dudes, main dudes, the director and the art director. Good work. And you end up caring for the characters, like, you, you go through so much. <laughs> you go like, oh, yeah, what's going to happen to them? So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, I won't spoil the very last part. Um, anyhow, that's the book. That's Shin Megami Tensei 4 for the 3DS. This is the art production book. Um... 
if you like art, you like design, you like DD games, you like all Atlas themes, good themes, do yourself a favor and have a, have a look. Maybe you can get this. Um, just want to share this with everybody. Um, start a conversation about it. This is always a lot of good stuff. So they, they're also done all these other art books for the other series, for other things. Anyway, um, thank you so much for your time and for watching. Please like and subscribe. You have a good night. Bye.